Welcome to another episode of the School of Airway. It's dedicating the music to Prodigy. He just recently passed away from Queens. Many a time I listen to the song walking to a shift. My shook one. My resident shook ones. Doesn't matter. It'll be all about the survival of the fittest. I aim to be one of the fittest. At least in the head and the mind. I'm defeating disease. Uh, welcome back to another episode of School Away. Um, we did have a video about a tomahawk method with the glide scope for intubation. Uh, currently, the ER is very hot, uh, busy, and the one glide scope we have in the hospital, uh, at least for the ED, is being, uh, possibly being used. So, I did notice something this past month that there is a weakness to the tomahawk bed. It all depends how you use the blade and views the airway. So, if you can understand this, people have used the uh, the glide scope, uh, the blade, and a Mac uh, or Miller uh, technique. Uh, if you use it in the Mac technique, the danger is if you have a redundant, long, excessive epiglottis, you're going to notice this type of view. So, no matter how much you reach, to visualize, you'll just see epiglottis. And if you barely see cords, barely see cords, and if there's camouflage, airway camouflage, as Leviton uh, reports, soiling, secretions, blood, food, it's very easy to say, I think I see the cords and I'm gonna pass the tube, right? Because the tube is not skinny, it's not a skinny uh, bougie. Remember, you would have to put this device in the airway. And look, looks like it's aligned. Looks like it's aligned. And all it takes is some secretions. And you just pushing forward. It will look like a successful intubation. It'd be a very, very long, redundant epiglottis. And the only way you'll find out is when the patient eventually starts desatting and you've delayed using your entitled CO2 and like, hey, there's no number registering in the entitled CO2. You're like, what the heck's going on? So I'm becoming more of an advocate. If you're gonna use the Mac view, uh, if you're gonna use the glide scope and the Tomahawk method, you almost better off using it in the Miller technique of taking and lifting the epiglottis, visualizing the epiglottis, lifting and pushing it aside, and watching the cords. If you do it the Mac view, there's too much chance of redundant epiglottis disguising or making it appear that the tube is going in, the tube's going in, the tube's going in, the tube's going in. But at an angle, you're like, hmm, not sure, not sure, not sure. And only later on diagnosing a mistaken intubation in the Softies. That makes sense? So again, if you're gonna use this device, right? Hmm, I'm gonna use this tomahawk method. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Not this. Not the suggesting of, oh yeah, I think I see it, I think I see it. Right? I mean, never like it, but this is the best view I get. This is the barely the best view I get. Not this. This is way obvious. There are some people with very long epiglottis. You won't figure it out until you get in there. You only see this. You're better off. Miller view. Miller view. Again, Miller view. You do that, then I'm a believer. If the tube goes in through that, you're in. Make sense? If you don't believe, you try it out. Give me some feedback, okay? All right, so hopefully you'll be back for another session of School of Railways. All right. Bye-bye.